Hello. This week I thought I'd make some wire trees. I haven't done any of these for a little while. I certainly haven't done any since I've been making the videos. So basically what I do is I've cut 14 lengths of wire. They're about 50 centimetres long. You don't have to be exact. And it's one millimetre gauge wire. And then what I'm going to do is just uh, shuffle them, get them all in position and start to squeeze them, you know, tight together before I start the twisting. And once you've done that, you've got them all together, you can bend it in two and that will give you the loop at one end. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, get something like a brush, put that in the loop, and then that allows you to twist it. Now you can do it by hand, but using pliers, it's it makes it a lot easier. You know, or you know, if you've got any other smaller ones as well. As you go up the tree, obviously it's going to get easier anyway. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide it into two. So I'm looking to have 14 on each side. And then I can pair that off into the two main branches that I'm going to create. Once I've done this, it's just a matter of doing what we've done with the base part and uh, twisting it. So you just don't want to go too far up because we want to branch off soon. Do the same on the other side. And that's it. And it looks like that. And all you want to do is same again you're splitting up the ends now it's up to you at this point because the idea is to make it random you could divide it equally and have two equal size branches or make one slightly thicker than the other i think on this one i'm just going to go with about 50 50. And then it's just repeating what you've done before. Once you've got how many you want, you just start twisting them together. Like that. And again, you don't want to go too far up because you're going to do the same process again. But do that to each piece. So then I'm pairing them off again now. And this on this one, I probably am going to go for an uneven a number of rods on either side. So I can start to vary the branches a little bit. But you've uh, you've just got to basically random it, and you know, go with what you know. Make a random decision each time, because it's just going to make it look far more realistic than if you stick to a set pattern all the time, and just you know, make it more individual. So that's like that look, and I've still got room for more. That can branch off. Obviously, I've got the other side to do, but you just take your time with it. Another thing you can do with some of these is if you want, you know, like some smaller branches, is you can actually 
just say twist off two. And then you've got like a sub branch. Just get these done. Right. So that's what it's looking like now. But as you can see, you just you just basically you're making it up as you go along. You know, that's what's going to make it work at the end of the day. You know, try and think about, you know, what trees look like and, you know, use your imagination to, you know, just make your decisions different each time. Here's something different. on. You can take one strand, pull it down so it's like a loop and twist that off to have a little side branch on the actual main branches I'll just tighten that up and then the others you can just twist as normal so on this one you've got like a a random side branch now you can do this with the others as well you know you can bend over one of the middle uh, branches that are carrying on loop that over and tighten it up into a thicker branch and you'll end up with a little loop on the end. Right, I'll just get the rest done and then I'll bring you back. All right, so when you've twisted them all out, you've got your basic tree shape. It doesn't, you know, I mean, it pays not to be exact, to be honest, because nature isn't exact. So the more you can just make random decisions the more realistic it's going to look when it's finished now what i was going to say is on these uh loops that you can see at the ends i don't know if i bring one really close up you see at the end of the wire where i've got a bit of a loop well there's two ways you can go with that you can either snip it open And then just flatten it out into like that one there. Look, I'll split it into two little one strand branches at the end, or you can just squeeze them up tight and twist them a bit more. And then flatten it to get just if you just want a pointy end. But I'm going to open up some of these just to give it a little bit more. A fine branch. You can see how they're coming on. There's another one look. Right, so I'm going to do the rest of these hoops, squeezing them up or cutting them open, flattening them out into single branches, and then I'll bring you back. So when you're happy with the top of your tree, you know, you can tweak it around at this stage anyway and get it how you want it. But we turn attention to the bottom and the roots. And all we're doing here is exactly the same as we've done this only on a smaller scale because we're twisting the roots so basically I part a few of these hoops and just cut through them and then what you do is Peel a few off, split them up. You don't want as many as the branches, obviously. But, uh, and then you just twist them. Now at this point, because obviously you're dealing with a smaller wire, you might need some tweezers or pliers to squeeze this up.
split another one off here, I think. It doesn't matter if a few give way. It's not going to hurt because you're going to be covering this up anyway. You want some some slightly thicker than the others. There's no there's no science to it. You just basically do it by eye. You know, pick some to be thicker roots than others. Whatever looks the most natural, really. You can trim anything that's unsightly or. You don't want on it. I'll trim that one. Just twist these two together. And then basically you can space them out like you have done with your branches. You probably need your pliers again to put kinks in it. You know, because you don't want it perfectly straight. I mean, at the minute, I can use them to stand it up, look. So that's what the root system looks like. And that's that. So it, it just basically gives a slightly fuller tree um, I've done one earlier that's really tiny with a single branch going up and a few branches coming off but you get the feel of it I mean this one to me looks like it could be a nice vibrant tree this one is probably going to end up looking a bit sickly you know like a bit dying off it, it's just what it appears to you really but obviously what you want is some different types right so as you can see I've made myself up five little twisted metal trees right the next stage that I'm going to do is I've got some liquid latex here and what I'm going to do have undone it is paint all of each tree with the thin late with a thin layer of the latex and then I'm gonna have to leave it to dry for a long while and then apply another coat and what that'll do is it'll hide all these you know the wire wrinkles it'll leave a bit of a pattern but the good thing about that is because I used to use uh, milliput um, but when that sets, obviously it sets hard. Um, it's got a little bit of flexibility, but not much. So I'm going to use this uh, liquid latex now. And hopefully that will mean that I can repose the trees if I need to later. So all I'm going to do... I've not used this for a while, so I hope it's still good. Is just paint it on like I say don't want to put it on too thick at first just give it an even coat but the main thing is you got to obviously cover all of it because you don't want any of it showing through it's gone a bit thick this is because I've had it for a while so I'm glad I'm using it now
I say, make sure that the coat, the underneath and the top, you want to cover all of it. It is usually a little bit more ruddy than this, as you can probably tell. This is very old stock. I've not used it for ages. But it will fill in all of those creases, but still leave the tree flexible. So what I'm going to do, because I don't want to hang around while I'm doing this, I'll paint this one up and uh, then I'll bring you back. Right, so what I've done is I've given them a few coats now and I'm gonna let them thoroughly dry now. There, there are gonna be the odd bits where I've, you know, it's dripped off of it. So it's best now if I give them a little bit of time to completely dry and then when they dry to touch, I can apply another thin coat and any bits that look awry, I can shape them, cut them or whatever and remove them and uh, just finish it off. So all the metal is coated. So now that they're completely dry, uh, what I've done is I've given them a coat of primer. Now, I was hoping to use leather brown or something like that, but the only one I'd got left in stock was the uh, desert yellow. But it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be touching these trees up anyway. Um, I just wanted a good foundation level over the latex. And uh, when this is dry, I can then start looking at, you know, introducing the greys and the greens and the browns into the uh, the bark. But the main thing is the, the latex has covered everything well. They are still very flexible. Right, so the next stage, now that they've dried, is I'm going to attach them to some MDF bases using my glue gun. Hold it in place while it sets. Tap it along. We're going to build up a base around that anyway, so this is just to hold it in place while we do that. that as you can no doubt guess is my dog Bobby reminding me that he's outside and now he wants to come back in and if we're on video long enough in about another three minutes he'll be barking to go back out right I'll be back in a second right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint them up um, now my choice for this um, is not necessarily going to be you know your choice you're going to decide what kind of tree you want it to look but i've gone for a bit of a a little bit of green mixed with brown black and white so it's got a gray color with a hint of green in it um i'm going to be touching them up again afterwards but i want this as my main color because it's very rare you see a tree that's just brown. There's always a hint of something, so this is the one I'm going to go with. In an ideal world, it would have been better with a slightly darker undercoat 
but as I said before it was just what I had in stock and I just wanted to make sure it got a decent prime level on it you know that it'd take all this extra paint and what I'll probably do when this is dry is um, do some dry brushing on it as well you can see the colour change now right so I'll get this painted up and then I'll bring you back right so I've given them all a coat now and this is like I say it's a mixture of uh, green black and white so it's got some gray overtones but it's also got some green and I'm gonna let these thoroughly dry now and then I'll just give them a bit of an overbrush and then I've got to make a decision whether I'm because there's two ways I could go with these now I could when once they're painted up go straight on with the foliage because they're fairly you know they've got quite a lot of branches so it it'll adhere quite well to it but I'm toying with the idea of using a little bit of uh, rubberized horse hair that I can just really tease out into fine pieces around some of the key branches to keep it separated out but to give the impression of some even finer branch work going on I'm not quite sure on that one yet but uh, before I get to that stage anyway, I'm going to get these pretty much how I want them. So once they've dried, I'll probably go over them with a, a very light dry brush of uh, some oak brown or something like that. And so what I'm doing now, uh, now that the first uh, overbrush is done, I've decided to go with the uh, rubberized horsehair. So what I've done is I've took a small piece and I'm pulling off little bits at a time and really teasing it out quite thin. I'm taking out any of the unsightly little bits that you get in it, the, you know, these dark brown bits. And I'm doing a bit of a dry fix to it at the minute because I just want to make sure that it looks right when it's in place. So I didn't really want to get the glue all mixed into it in case I wasn't happy with where it was going on. So all I do is just like tease a little bit of this apart. I'm splitting it down the middle almost you could say. Uh, so you can get quite a bit out of a small amount. I'm kind of picking how much I want to take based on the branches that I'm trying to cover. Doesn't matter if the shape's perfect because you can trim it. But first of all, I'm just sque getting it onto the branches and into place where where I want it to be. That's not too bad. Let's get another piece for the top branches. As you can see it's fairly lightly covered because I still want to see the uh, some of the branch work between it but um, what I'm going to do now is you, you can see that it's got little bits hanging down anything that looks out of place I'm just going to go around give it a little bit of an air cut Fairly happy with that. There's 
one branch here that I've got to put a little bit onto this piece. don't have to be too you know perfect about it it's it, it's got to look wild at the end of the day but you can see it's starting to give it that under branch feel and I will give that a dust of another cut of uh, probably a brown or something just to taper it down even though greens okay but it will just add to the feeling of the branch, uh, thin branches coming away if it's got a bit of brown in there as well. Because obviously the flock's going to be the main greenery. Right, I'll just get the rest of these done and I'll bring you back. Right, so as you can see, I've not only put the... Uh, rubberized horsehair all over the trees to make up the branch parts but I've also now sprayed that a darker brown colour and that can be on there while the glue's fixing it as well and I'm going to let them thoroughly dry now and then they'll be ready to uh, well, I've got two choices. I can either start lightening up the tree trunk and everything again now, or go straight to putting on the uh, foliage. Well, I'll make a decision on that when it's dry. But onwards and upwards, nearly done. Right, so what I've done now, now that they're completely dry, um, I've mixed up some of my own sculpt mould, which I've made out of uh, mulched toilet paper and uh, some plaster of Paris. And what I'm doing is I'm squeezing that in around the roots of the tree. I'm not taking it up very high, I'm keeping it fairly flat. I'm squeezing it into place while it's wet. And this will dry hard and then it can be, uh, you know, covered with whatever I want to use, you know. I'll probably use some soil or something like that. But initially what I'll do is when it's dried is I'll paint it and then look at the kind of flock that I want for it. The only thing with this stuff is you, you, you've got to work fairly fast uh, because it soon dries and it's no good making it, you know, extra watery to compensate because it'll still dry or, or it will sit on the project and take forever to dry. Um, so it's just a matter of working quick, which is why I'd started a few before I brought you back. So you could just see me getting it onto these last ones but the beauty of this stuff is um, it'll dry solid but it's not going to weigh too much but it will give a little bit of weight to the bottom of the tree and just help with its stability I mean there are other materials that you can use I mean I've used uh, filler in the past the only trouble is with filler is you know sometimes you know if you're a bit uh, clumsy with your things you can actually crack it afterwards you know and then obviously it lifts all the color off with it um, and the other disadvantage is that it's uh, a bit heavier so whenever I can, I tend to use this sculpt mould stuff because it is so light. And 
miracle of miracles I've uh, it looks like I've mixed just enough which anybody that uses this stuff will tell you it's very rare usually you either mix far too much or not enough <laughs> but it's not skill it was luck <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Next to nothing over. Can't believe it. Right. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that just dry off for a few minutes and then I can move in. Just dampen my finger. And I can smooth it out. I mean, you don't have to do that because obviously it's supposed to represent earth so you can leave it a bit bumpy. But I am going to smooth this out a bit more. I just want a little, a little bit smoother than it is. So I'm just going to let it dry a little bit and then uh, I'll bring you back. Now that they've dried out a little bit, I've gone in with a fine brush. Just as just a damp brush really and just uh, cleaned over the root systems that I want to show through at the top of the soil you know so you so they're a little bit more they're buried but you can see them on the surface and I've done that for each of them and then as I said before what I'm going to do just damp my finger and just smooth it to whatever finish you want. I don't want it too smooth. Just I don't want any obvious lumps and bumps. I don't want it too wet because you don't want to disturb it now it's on there just wet enough to do the top surface of the plaster to smooth it out a bit more and then I'll just bring in bring this in in a minute and show it you oh. not gone for perfect smooth just smooth enough so it looks realistic and as I say obviously we're going to be putting some scatter and stuff on here anyway I just didn't want anything too pronounced make sure that it all sits well and that'll be it so I'll get the rest of these done we'll let it dry and then we'll come back for the next bit Right, so now that the bases have uh, dried, I'm applying the flock, and what I'm using on this one is some Woodland Scenics coarse turf medium green, and I'm going to apply, you know, a reasonable amount onto it at first. Might not get the coverage that I want straight away. But I can always respray it and add a little bit more. A little sprinkling underneath. Just tap it. Right, and then I'll put that one to dry. And I'll bring in the next one. Right, I'm not going to spray that in here, so bear with me, I'm just going to spray it outside. Right, I've given it a light misting, and this is what I'm using this time. I don't always use this. Um, I have got some tacky spray glue as well, but I just got some of this in the back of the cupboard, so I thought I'd use it up. So I've lightly misted it. First of all, I'll just sprinkle a bit on. Uh, 
and then dip it in it as well. Tiny sprinkle underneath on the edges. And that's it. As I say, do I'll probably give these another coating, but I'm just gonna get the first coat on first. And it'll also highlight any little trimmings that I need to do, like here, look, you can see a few loose ones that I can just cut off things that spoil the look. Right, so I'll get the rest of these done and then uh, I'll bring you back. Right, so another little stage that I do is I've got some uh, Green Stuff World, this is, natural leaf litter. Um, I don't use very much of it because obviously it's uh, more of an autumn thing, but I will put the odd one or two here and there on it, on the tree, because even in summer you'll get dying, dying and dead leaves. So it just gives it a little bit more of a feel of a living tree. There we go. I like to say it's only one or two. I've not gone mad with it. You probably I don't know whether you can pick them out even on the there. Right now the next stage and this is really just to add a bit of a highlight like the sun's coming down on it. I'm going to use some Woodland Scenic Burnt Grass. Again I'm really sparing with it. You just want this on the top surfaces it just breaks up that green and like I say gives the impression that the sun's shining on it you can see how little I'm using you really don't need a lot of this about it well, you can see that in the light it, it just gives it that bit more of a feel I've still got to tidy up around these uh, low hanging branches and that yet but I can do that at the last thing Right, I'll get these other ones done and then I'll bring you back again. Right, so what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to just give a basic brown brush to the base. And all it is is just some brown paint and I've mixed a little bit of PVA in with it. Now, I would normally at this stage go on to you know um, put some kind of uh, scatter on it like you know a grass finish or some tufts and things like that but I've got a project in mind for these trees so I'm just going to leave it with this basic brown but obviously if you were doing this you could finish it anyhow that you want you know if you want to have just a you know, a leaf scatter underneath it or 
some plain soil and a little bit of thinned out grass and a couple of tufts. You know, it'll be, you know, up to you really. But that is where I'm aiming at. And I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, because, like I say, I've got a project in mind for these. Right, I'll get the rest of these done and then we can uh, wind this one up. One thing I did forget to say is one more final stage for these before I wrap it up. Um, is Obviously I'm going to let that paint dry now. And then I'm going to give it a thorough spray of this matte sealant spray by Geek Gaming. Because although these, um, you know, they're going to be handled fairly delicately, I don't want it dropping flock all the time and dropping bits. So I want to give it a really good seal in this. I mean, you may still get the odd bit drop off, but they're going to stand a lot more handling. Um, so I always give it a good, good soak of this and then let it thoroughly dry. Right, so they've totally dried now. And as you can see, they're, uh, they're not shedding anymore. They're very firm. They're, they're gonna take a lot of knocking around. There's perhaps a few little bits that I could still trim off, but on the whole, I'm really happy with them. Everything seems to have really glued up really tight now. So I'm going to call them done. I mean, obviously, as I've said about the base, I would normally decorate this, but I've got a project in mind for these um, and I want to match them into the project. So I'm not going to decorate the base at this stage. Um, so that's basically how I make my wire trees. Well, I hope you've uh, enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Um, if you have, please consider giving me a thumbs up and uh, subscribing so you can see when the next video drops. Anyway, I'll see you all again soon. Bye.